Hello there and welcome to episode 2 of the Infinite Mana series and today we'll be looking at how to make the player jump and as well as setting up some procedurally generated levels. So I mean that's a complex word to use but it is not that complex. So we are taking to taking a prefab and then spawning it in positions across the player's movement. So that is going to be the procedural generation that I'm talking about. So this is going to be our plane. We will be generating this as the player goes forward. So let's just create instances of it. I'll just duplicate it and give it some space and then go to the player and first of all let's uh, talk about jumping I'll just go to widget body and and add this we need the rotation to be fixed right now and we'll We'll go about animations later. So, so now we'll just uh, hit play and see whether the same setup is working for the widget body or not. So, and it's working. So now we need the player to have uh, you know the tiles generated in front of him so let's uh, take this plane and yeah I'll just create it uh, create an empty object in this and drag it into the plane so you can see that this object defines the position of this plane with respect to this plane so this is going to be our spawn point and this is going to be triggered as soon as the player hits the plane so that is going to be our main objective so this is going to be my platform prefab and I'll just go to project and create a folder called prefabs and drag this in here and now I'll just go to playmaker and Before that, I'll just tag this as ground and hit apply and add a quick FSM that or we'll just add another thing, add a cube and this is going to be our trigger and this is not the only way to do it but it's one way of doing it so this is going to be this high because we don't need the player we don't want the player to escape this trigger so this is going to be my trigger I'll just disable the mesh renderer and tick is trigger so I'll just name it trigger player enter so now I'll just go to platform and say trigger enter sorry event okay now it's this I'll just add the FSM to the cube right now trigger event 
and on trigger enter and the collide tag will be set to player and when that means when the player enters the this trigger it will spawn it will spawn a tile in front of it so send the event create platform and this is going to state to where we create an object which is going to be our platform in this spawn point so that is going to be the basic scripting for this let's hit apply and this is going to be working only for this platform so let's test that out so if I enter that platform it would spawn another platform in front of it and it works and you can see that it has an infinite generation of platforms and in the same way we need a trigger attached to the player okay. attached to the player or let's say the camera and this is going to be a cube Out. Yeah. and this is going to be a little bit behind the camera so this is going to be named platform kill and I'll disable the mesh renderer and this is going to be acting as a trigger so I'll just add an FSM and this would say trigger event and on trigger enter ground it would send an event to destroy and it would store the collider in platform this is a game object variable so I'll just say destroy object platform and then we'll go to the next frame event that would shuttle back to the first state and that is going to be pretty much it and we'll just save the scene and hit play except for it to not okay it's not working the grounds are tagged but we are facing an issue Okay, let's just see and fix that. Otherwise, we could just add point and say that I'll just disable this as a trigger.
and I'll go to platform and say that if this is tagged obstacle just for now I'll just change the tag it would send an event to kill and that would destroy self yeah now let's see if that works and it should work only for this platform and no it's not working it requires a with the body or something like that to detect the trigger so I'll just uh, get rid of this and work on this so we can even say that if the player exits a particular trigger then it should That should work. So I'll just name this spawn trigger and I'll duplicate this and I'll bring this to the edge. And in this, I'll just say wait a second, I say and it would finish and destroy itself first it would get the parent and it would store result as the platform and destroy that object so that is one way of doing it So now if I hit apply, and hit play, it should wait for one second and destroy itself. So I'll just stick to scene view, and there we go, it's working perfectly. And we can see that only the f only the platform in which the player is standing is working and the rest are being destroyed so that would be a huge impact on the performance so that's it for this episode in the next episode we'll we will talk about how the player would jump across obstacles and and we'll just create some obstacles for the player we would scale this down to go underneath the obstacles and so so that is for episode 2 I'll see you in episode 3 this is Crossfire signing out